Wow. Well, hello everybody and welcome back to another addictive fishing video. Sorry for my grubby appearance. I've been in the woods elk hunting for five days, but we had to bring you guys a video. We couldn't miss a week. So we have the kayaks, we have a beautiful lake, and we have a fun day ahead of us of catching some awesome trout. So let's get everything launched. Let's get the show on the road. Come on, little. Boy, everyone, look at that sexy old town kayak. I am so, so proud of this thing. No, no, other one. He goes here. Oh, no, no, you don't go with Uncle Sean today. No, over here. Oh, he totally abandoned me. He's abandoning me. Come on, you get the chair. Come on, over here, over here, over here. Come on, oh, he's climbing the mountains. Come on, get in this one. There you go, king of the castle. That's it. Now, if you guys haven't seen the last kayak voyage, would have been the last kayak video on Addicted. Um, I did a five, four or five day trip down the Columbia River from Bonneville Dam all the way to Astoria. Trip of a lifetime, some may say. And we documented the whole damn thing. I'll try not to die here on the way out. Do me a piggy shuffle. Piggy shuffle. Piggy shuffle. I almost forgot to do this. That's important. Got too excited, everyone. There we go. Anyways, here we go. Bon voyage. Fishing looks good. It smells like smoke up here. Look at how gorgeous this place is. One of my favorite lakes to fish. Marlon did a video on this lake a long time ago, um, and I did a stay fishy video on this lake not too long ago this spring. So this will be the first time I've ever fished in the fall. We got the old town. We got two batteries today. This Dakota lithium batteries that we just got are absolutely awesome. Um, but we got the old town kayak. We got the rods. We are set to go. We're gonna park the truck and head out to the deep blue. Okay, so while I get my first setup out, I'm gonna throw, I'm just gonna throw this little dude, my favorite white, white and silver, rooster tail. We'll get the job done, no matter what. I'm gonna throw that in there. And I'm gonna set up the real killer of a rig. Probably the best. I got two of our fabulous sponsors fishing here today. We got Yakima Baits, Rooster Tails, in the boat, in the house. Jared Higginbotham, whoop whoop. See you out there. Uh, and then I have my Brad's KCPs and my Dodgers. And that's what I'm gonna be setting up on this rod. Now the rods I'm using here today, the Okuma SSTs. These are pretty cool. These are a nice little rod. Um, they just came out with these this year. And I must say they're a little bit they're not as good as the guide select i love the Salilo as well but it's a great it's a bargain honestly they're lightweight they're fun uh and they're a lot of they're really a lot of fun to fight fish on so i'm excited to use these today and especially to pull with it and see how the action is so let's get this one rigged up okay the setup we're doing today everyone we're doing brad's dodger very flashy very nice and the mini cut plugs so i'm going to tie a little slider weight here i got the slider weight on there I'm gonna take just another barrel swivel so I can make my fingers work. There we go, good job me. I'm gonna do about a one foot bumper or so, two foot maybe. Hell, let's go three. One foot, two foot, three foot, whatever. I'm gonna go for about a three foot bumper. Okay, now so one thing I do that's a really good trick for these KCPs Instead of adding all the beads and having the beads all the way down to your hook, I've started to just use one bobber stop. These are little rubber bobber stops you can get at just about any tackle store. That allows me to keep that little cut plug above my hook so that I'm not, so that I get a good action and then those fish aren't grabbing uh, only a single hook. They're getting both those hooks when they go to grab it. So I got that one little bead, got my deal here, and then I'm going to pick my poison. Let's see here. I'm going to go with the Old Faithful Orange. Kind of seems to always work. And I've caught them here really good on this one before. But we got a couple different colors. We got this chartreuse. We got this little rainbow trout looking one. We got a, the creamsicle and the orange. But I'm going to go with the orange first. See how it works. And while I'm trolling, I can get a couple other leaders tied. That's the, that's the nice part. See how fishy this is. Way fishy. Super fishy. 
Okay, now this just goes right to the back end of the, of the flasher here. Probably don't want really a super long leader. I might shorten that one up just a tiny bit. And there we have it. We're ready to fish. This time of year, these fish should be at a pretty neutral level. There's a lot of bugs still on the surface, but they're getting ready for winter and they are gonna be feeding hard. They usually, I'm really hoping it's gonna be one of those fall bites where everything works, they're just on the feed, they're chowing hard, and they're ready to give us some action. Okay, deploying. Oh, that action looks great. Now the big thing about that KCP, about this uh, Flasher McDealy Bob, or Dodger rather, you do not want it spinning in full rotations. You want it just doing a nice gradual back and forth flip, almost like a wobbler or a spoon. Back and forth, you don't want it going in circles, you don't want it going too fast. And you see that KCP right behind it, giving it a nice action, giving it something to look for. Okay, switching sides again. Okay, here it goes. I'm gonna start probably at 20 feet or so, see what level they're at. I see them rolling all around out here, but we're gonna have to figure out what depth they're actually feeding at. Fish, fish on. Oh, oh, is he still there? Oh yeah, he's still there. Sweet. That looks like a good one. Oh, it's a really good one. Oh, you guys missed it earlier. A little actually fell off the kayak because a dragonfly tried to kill him. Uh, and he was really, really mad about it. And he's been in the back pouting now because his dad yelled at him. Oh, this is such a pretty trout. Ladies and gentlemen, we've gone about 100 yards and we're in business. We are in business. Yeah. Look at how pretty this thing is. Oh, wow. He really bends that freaking SST like no other. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. That's pretty cool. This thing is gorgeous. So now the story behind these trout, this, this lake has been stocked once ever. These are all naturally occurring trout. This lake was formed by a volcano erupting. Uh, and so these fish were actually steel, some of these fish in here were actually steelhead that got trapped up in these rivers when the mountain erupted and caused this all to be formed. This lake uh, it was never here. It was a creek and it backfilled up as this landmass came down. And, and now we have these beautiful trout. I wanna watch that bottom hook. Really would not like to get hooked on the very first fish of the day. There she is, everyone. What a pretty fish. Thank you, little guy. Good start to the day, fish number one. Barely, I can still see the boat ramp. This is, this is going well. All right, so right now, we're chilling hard looking at this beautiful view and we're traveling at about 1.3 miles an hour. Your trolling speed can be huge with these KCPs. I'm at two and a half on my electric trolling motor here. So I'm going 1.3 miles an hour and sometimes the trout, especially when it's warm like this, want it a little bit faster. So I'm gonna be messing with that. You'll adjust your weight to your speed. I'm only using one ounce now, maybe I'll go to two ounces and speed it up to two miles an hour and try to figure out what speed those fish want uh, to be biting at. Sometimes it doesn't matter. Sometimes they just want the thing so bad, they're gonna eat it. But today we've already got one. Uh, really my goal is to make it to the inlet of the lake where the, the water comes down and in. because There's a lot more cool water coming in there. One just rolled right in front of us here. Uh, cooler water coming in and these fish in the fall, especially wild fish like this, are going to spawn. They're going to go on to the spawn here in a few, in the next couple of weeks, honestly. Uh, man, there are so many bugs on the surface. It's insane. You guys can see all these. I'm not sure if you can see them really well, but these are all called chronomids. They're like a, a mi micro shrimp species almost really interesting little creatures but i know the fish have got to be just gording themselves on them especially because again it's almost winter time they got to get stocked up for the cold weather um, but we're going to make our way to the inlet of the lake and I'm, then i'm going to stop trolling and probably start casting around a lot more but i'm going to troll my way over with my kcp see what kind of success we have and then we're going to start sight fishing for these things so i can't wait to get to the other side and i have a really cool lunch plan so that's going to be the best part Oh, there he is. He's still there? 
I think you let it go. Crap. Oh, false alarm. He didn't eat it. He didn't eat it. Or maybe he's just swimming with it. Sometimes I'll hit these things and just follow along with it, but I don't know. Anyways, back to it. Oh, oh, hammer time, hammer time. No way you came off. Wow, wow, that thing was absolutely smash Oled. I just thought the rod was gonna break for a second there. Wow. Oh, there we go, there we go, that's a good one. He's on there. He's on there, oh yeah. He's really on there. That was a good take, everyone. Freaking smash a Rooney cakes. Holy smokes. Got some weight to him, got some weight to him. Pause this real quick. Bring him on this side. What do we got here? A mystery. Oh, what a cool looking fish. Whoa, whoa, he's, he's a maniac. He tried to kill me. Come on, little dude. Oh, gee. oh God, oh wow. Oh, oh, he's tearing me up, he's tearing me up. He's trying to flip me over. Oh, jeez. Oh God, oh God. He's trying to get in the cameraman's boat. Oh, what a cool looking fish. Look at this thing. Just hammered it too. Just went ham skis. Wham skis. Wow, look at that thing. Look at the tail on that. Really does resemble a steelhead almost. Just the way those spots are. What a pretty fish. Oh, oh, geez, oh, okay. All right, let's let him go. All right, Mr. Fish, we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Killer, fish number two and they're getting bigger. I did notice last time I fished this lake, they kept getting bigger the further towards the other end of the lake we got. I know there's fish in here that are pushing like 10 pounds. I've heard crazy stories and I've seen pictures of some giants in here, so better get back in. Try to get to the other end of the lake and hope this wind doesn't pick up. The wind's coming this way, but we better hope we have enough battery to make it back against the wind. So we brought two today, because last time we fished this lake, we ran out of battery and had to paddle back across with a stick. So if you didn't see that, it's on the Stay Fishy Adventures channel. It was not the most fun thing I've ever done, but it was funny. Okay, let's get back in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Well, pause the music, everyone. Pause the music. Hit the brakes. Got things to do here. Holy crap. He's turning the boat. He's turning the boat. Wow, what a hit. What a hit. Fish number three. We've made it almost all the way across the lake, and this one seems to be a good one. Man, the way they're taking these little cut plugs down is just phenomenal. They are just smashing them. Oh, there he is, I can see him. This water is so incredibly clear, it's awesome. Oh, little guy, he's a little guy. Still beautiful though, oh my gosh. Just chill, little. It's okay. Little's new least favorite thing in the world, dragonflies. He absolutely hates these things. You guys missed it earlier though, he fell off the boat. It's okay. Oh, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> oh, he hates him. <laughs> it's okay. There he is, everybody. Fish number three. And in these lakes like this where we're fishing wild trout, I try to always use barbless hooks. That way they're not getting hurt. That way they're getting away happy and safe and to live another day. We can keep fishing this lake, but you can only keep one a day over 18 inches long. I don't think even if we catch one that big, I'm gonna keep it because I like to see those big ones survive and go out and go on to spawn. So I do have another thing in store for lunch though, so we will not go hungry. But until then, back to the troll. So I've done exactly as I said earlier, when you're trolling any, any kind of trolling setup, whether it's a, like a wiggler or a Paula or a flasher like this or a Ford Fender, it's really, really important to change your weights and change your speed. That can make you a lot better troller, uh, even if you're in a kayak, if you're just paddling with your kayak or in a canoe or something, using different weights and using different speeds can kind of key in that bite. Since we've left the dock over there, I've changed my weight three times and now I'm all the way up 
to a two ounce, or to a, excuse me, a three ounce lead. So I'm using three ounces and I'm going at this point, I'm still going two and a half, but with the wind, we're going about 1.6 miles an hour. And I'm starting to get more bites. Cons oh, there he is in the hand, in the hand. That's what I was talking. Oh, yep, got him. See everybody, I'm not full of it. Sick. That was actually up near the surface too. I was starting to wonder. Oh, he's gone. Crap. False alarm. False alarm. Oh, geez, that's a big one. I don't know if he's still there or not. I don't think he is. He can come off. Oh, no, he's there. Just a little guy. Just a little trout. Whoa, he's a tail walking. Holy moly. He's a tail walker. He's a Luke tail walker. Uh oh, we got another dragonfly to kill. Poor Lidman's gonna lose his mind. Oh, really pretty guy though. Oh, jeez. Oh, he's trying to get me in the logs. Oh, he's a jumper. Holy moly. These things got some spunk, everyone. These are spunky trout. Oh, oh, there he goes. That can be really important when safely handling these things. One, with the barbless hooks is a good idea. And two, when you go to grab these fish, don't do it with a dry hand. Wet your hand first, get down under that fish's belly and gently pick it up. Kind of hold it, tickle its belly a little bit. Stupid dragonfly. Tickle its belly a little bit, be friendly with them, and then let them swim away nicely. Oh, there's a good one. Oh, it's bottom. Oh, no way. Okay. So in the mix of being snagged, we might have just had a major score. A major score, everyone. We didn't bring any beverages today. Nonetheless, we're going to help clean up Mother Nature a little bit. But what do we have here? That's a full beer. That's a full beer here. Oh, it's soda. It's a soda. Yeesh. I don't know if we're going to drink that one, everyone. But we'll save it. Wow. This is truly an awe-inspiring place. The, the amount of force and just the sheer magnitude of the geology here is unreal. This was never a lake. Uh, and then the volcanic eruption is what caused this. And to see all this wood and all this, this land mass basically that's formed this lake is just mind blowing. Looking at these logs sticking out of the water, it just kind of brings to a thought of what a hostile environment this was at one time. For a very short time, it was a big, big eruption. But it's really a cool setting to be fishing in. We're almost to the other side of the lake. We're getting closer. I think what we'll do is once we hit this other side of the lake, I'm gonna make my lunch. Uh, and then I'm gonna switch methods of fishing, try to do something a little bit different and uh, hopefully sight fish these things. Last time I was down here, I could see them swimming around. So it'll be really fun if we can do the same thing, stand up on the kayak, troll around and try to see if we can actually cast two fish and pick out the ones we wanna catch. So, but in the meantime, I am really enjoying this. I see a little fresh water coming in here out this other side. I notice a lot in the fall especially when it's hot like this, any sort of freshwater inlet, anywhere that there's some cool water coming into the lake, it's where those fish are gonna start staging to spawn. Uh, and that's where you'll usually find those biggest fish and they'll be all colored up and really pretty. So hopefully we'll find a couple species um, other than just those rainbows. And uh, hopefully we'll find some spawning fish that we can cast that, it'll be really fun. Wow. One more fish, everyone. We we're trying to take a thumbnail for you guys. So this video does good here on YouTube. And we got ourselves another fishy. Oh, wow, it is a cutthroat. This is a very, very cool fish here. This is a native cutthroat trout. Come here and look at this, you guys. This is so neat. One of my very favorite fishes. This is a, it was a West Slope cutthroat. Look at this thing. There's almost no spots on it. Just an incredibly beautiful fish. So you see the red gills on it? Right here underneath, you can see that red gill. Just, yep, it got me. There it is, everyone. 
and he's gone. He was a tough one to hold on to. <sighs> Ow. Beautiful place to get hooked in the finger, I'll tell you that much. But it didn't stick all the way in. Cool, two species, one cutthroat now, a beautiful, couple beautiful rainbows. We're almost to the end of the lake, so I'm liking this. We Just when we reeled that one in, I, oh, they're rolling right on the bank over there. I think what we're gonna do, oh, he's jumping out of the water. I think what we're gonna do now is switch tactics. Let's try something different. He's right there. Turned away. That's the biggest one I've seen so far. Here it goes. Oh, it snubbed me hard. He snubbed me so hard. Oh, that hurt inside a little bit. That hurt my pride, my feelings, my heart. He didn't do that. Terrible. Oh God, he's chasing it hard. I gotta get the right angle on him. I gotta get the right angle. And I got a left angle right now and it ain't working. It was very interesting there. By getting that spinner to go by him in a certain direction, it caused him to chase it down. And I saw him open his mouth for it, and then he turned away right at the last second again. Oh, there he is. That's one. There he is. There he is. That's even a bigger one. I see him. Okay, here we go. That is the nicest fish I've seen all day. Here we go. I think he lost interest. Ah, dang it. You know, all this excitement's caused me to work up an appetite. Time to cook. All right, it's time for lunch. Made it to probably one of the most epic settings you could ever ask for, for a fishing lunch. Look at this. That's what I call beautiful. Let's get the grill set up and let's eat. Ta-da! Take a quick guess what we're gonna eat. Burgers. I made some wonderful elk burgers for our elk camp here and uh, decided to bring them along with for the, for the meal today. Check them out. Delish. They got onions, red peppers, orange peppers, cheese, cheese its and eggs. Sounds pretty good to me. Let there be fire. fish. We're switching up tactics. I'm going to go straight rooster tails from here on out and I'm going to kind of hunt these things. As we are coming down the bank, getting a little closer to our lunch spot, there was a lot of fish feeding on the surface and a lot of fish just subsurface as well that you could see swimming around. So I'm going to switch up to a tactical method, start casting at them and see if I can get these things to chase it. check out the flip side. Now, elk is one of my favorite things to make burgers out of. It's very lean. It doesn't have much fat in it at all. So you really have to cook these things kind of a, a more of a medium rare or just completely rare sometimes. So I'm gonna get these things flipped a little bit early. Let them go for just a second longer. And then I'm gonna add my blue cheese. These are some pretty cool little blue cheese singles that I just found. Never seen them before. So I was very happy to get them. They're like little burger-sized blue cheese slices. I'm sure some of you out there are going, ew, blue cheese. But if you, don't, if you do like blue cheese and you're not going, ew, blue cheese, comment below and let me know. What's your favorite blue cheese? I love the stuff. Now for the reveal. Ooh. Better turn it off. We're ready to eat. Toss my buns over here, get them nice and nice and toasty. I like a toasty bun. There we go. Ha ha! We're almost ready. Okay, buns are toasty. Need a little ketchup. Wee bit of mustard. And our blue cheeseburger. Oh man, that looks good. Okay, we're gonna go avocado. Avocado kind of looks blue cheesy as well. <laughs> Let's go with a mess of onion. What do you guys think of this burger? Mm. 
Let's see those comments below. Burger time and then the crisp. Gotta have the big crunchy lettuce. There it is. Wow. One heck of a burger joint out here. Let's give her a try. Not the prettiest presentation I've ever had, but not bad for a kayak. Mm. It tastes as good as it looks on my face. Mm. Just phenomenal. And that blue cheese is a whole nother touch. Thank you whoever created that. I really appreciate it. Mm. Mm -mm. You can see the cheese in there, the onions, the squished bun, really ties it all together. I'm gonna enjoy the view. Well, playtime's over, everyone. It's time to go catch some fish. Okay, we're on the hunt. Things are getting real. The coolest part probably about these kayaks is in a situation like this where I wanna, I wanna fish a bank like this. I wanna get close to it. I wanna stay in the same area. I set my true north setting. I'm heading 212 degrees that way. And that's 212 degrees. That would be, what would that be everybody? That'd be almost directly south I'm going. 250 would be south. No, 200. I don't know. Whatever it is, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about catching some fish. So I'm gonna get in along this bank, start working this bank all the way down, see if I can't get me a, a recon fish. Pull one out. We had a lot of wind kick up here all of a sudden, so our sight fishing has really kind of gone away, unfortunately. It makes me sad. I was really looking forward to being able to see these fish, but this is what happens this time of year. It gets warm, it gets windy in the afternoons, and it gets harder to see the, see the bottom of the lake and see the fish ultimately. So I'm going to give this a good 10, 15 minutes, and if it doesn't work, I'm going to switch back to the old KCP. <gasps> There's one right there. I just cast it right on him. Is it going to happen? Oh, he's coming for it. Oh, God. Come on, little dude. Got him. Got him. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a good one, too. Heck, yeah. Walked it right into him. That was cool. Got to keep me bent up. Got to keep bent up. Oh, that was neat. I saw him at first. He came over, took a sniff at it on the first cast. Made a big, long cast. Oh, God, he's going to get my motor. I made a big, long cast back to the bank. Kind of swung it back behind the boat as we were in gear. And we got ourselves the nicest fish of the day on the rooster tail. Woo! Getting the best of both worlds here today. Wow, this is a cool fish. That was an epic first jump, too. It's okay. Have a quick look at this thing. Wow. Now, this one is a very... Very beautiful rainbow. Look how much like a steelhead that thing looks. So beautiful. White little tips on his tail. He's about to start spawning. Just an incredible little trout. Look at him. Oh, see you later. Bye-bye. All right, it worked. True north setting worked, except we were going south. So kind of an oxymoron. Let's get back to it. <gasps> He's coming for it. That one's huge. That one is huge. Holy cripes. I think he's still going for it. He's right on it. Oh my God. That thing was massive. By far the biggest one I've seen. Wow. Bummer. That is almost the hard part of fishing with these. You see those fish and at times when they do come up and swipe it, it'll change your action out of excitement or you'll set the hook a little too early and, and pull the hook right out of their mouth. It's kind of tough. Oh, there he was. Seems like this tactic of casting straight at the bank, kind of running it off of that drop off and then bringing it out into the deep water is working pretty damn good. Oh God, there he is, that's a good one. Oh, it's a really cool colored one too. I don't know what this is. Oh man, that was cool watching him bite. That was really neat. Came out of mid air or mid water, what have you. 
Oh, I think this is another cut of you guys. Oh no, it's just a really colored up rainbow. Look at that golden sheen to him. All right, all right. Get out of here, dragonflies. Little, look what I got. Why aren't you in the boat with me? He hates the dragonflies. Really cool looking fish. Oh, there he goes. Never really got a look at him, but that's okay. Beautiful, beautiful male, male trout. Epic, let's keep going. So the setup I have here today, same Okuma SST trout rod. I got the C30 Kaimar, same on my other rod, and I have a 20 pound enforcer braid. And it's really nice for casting these spinners. You see how far I'm getting this thing with every cast. I got an eight pound bumper on here for about 10 foot of fluorocarbon. And then I have two big split shots and a barrel swivel in between, down to my white and silver rooster tail. I put a single hook on this one uh, just to kind of protect the fish. That way I'm not hooked because I know I'm going to be catching and releasing them all. I don't want to be keeping any of these things. Even the, even the legal size I'm not going to keep. So uh, that single hook helps a lot for, for catching that fish, unhooking it, and I'm releasing them in a harm. So that's it. <laughs> oh, a little got one. <laughs> Little's over here fighting the freaking dragonflies like King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. Oh, no, oh, 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 you're gonna get, oh, he almost got that one too. He's catch of the day for little. Oop, one just jumped. We got a visual. We got visuals. We're having visuals. Oh, there he was. Oh, oh God damn it. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, out of nowhere. Oh. oh, I had him. Man, this is working really good, ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting one almost every cast. Oh, he's still on it. I almost gave up on him. Oh, now he's gone. What a zinger of a cast there. Way to go. Addicted enforcer. This is really neat. I can see my spinner blade spinning out there. And every time I see it disappear, I'm seeing a fish swim up, swim up and grab it basically and, and stop that blade from spinning. And that's what I'm setting the hook and hooking them. It's working pretty good. Reminds me of almost bass fishing. Working the structure, working the bank, slowly moving along with my trolling motor, casting my little heart out and hooking fish. This is awesome. Well, everybody, we've done what we came to do, eat burgers and catch fish. But with that being said, I got an elk to go kill. Sun's going down, the wind's blowing really hard now. We caught fish on all the methods we want, and it has been an amazing day hanging out with you guys in this incredible place. If you wanna see more fun videos just like you saw here today, go up here and click this link to this next video. Go down here, hit subscribe, turn those bells on, give this video a thumbs up and comment below, and you can be the comment of the day, just like this person right here. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. You stay fishy, we'll see you out there.